Colonising other planets and moons is a hot topic in astrophysics. Many would even say it's necessary for the survival of the human race. But the technology needed to set up distant bases on these hostile worlds and provide environments that humans can survive in, that's all a bit fiddly. Rather than building an environmental base for humans to live inside of, you simply made the planet more Earth-like. That's the basic idea behind terraforming or Earth-shaping. You take a barren planet like Mars or Venus and use grand scale engineering and chemical trickery. You adapt to their conditions until they become suitable for human life. Now it might sound like something out of science fiction, and to be fair it has been since the days of H.G. Wells, but scientists are beginning to look at terraforming as a very real possibility. It's a bit beyond us right now, we've got our hands full keeping our one planet habitable, but in the not too distant future we might well be able to tweak extraterrestrial environments to suit our needs, much like we do with environments on Earth right now. But stop for a second, whoa now, exactly how do you change a planet? Well, that depends on the planet. Mars and Venus, the most likely candidates for terraforming, each have their own unique obstacles to human life that would need to be dealt with. Solutions on how to do that range from the very simple to the positively harebrained, but all of them have just the right amount of science behind them to be worth taking a look at. First off, Venus. Often called Earth's twin, Venus has many features that make it a great target for terraforming. It's roughly the same size as Earth, so its gravity is pretty much the same. It shares a similar chemical makeup, and thanks to a thick atmosphere, there's little risk from solar radiation. The biggest challenge is the toxic air, carbon and sulphur dioxide rather than the oxygen that we need to breathe, and extreme heat thanks to a runaway greenhouse effect. Surface temperatures average around 450 degrees Celsius on Venus. Changing the atmosphere of a planet involves the same basic chemistry that takes place in any school laboratory, just on an almost unimaginably large scale. One theory says we could bombard the Venusian atmosphere with a moon-sized ball of hydrogen, which would react with the carbon dioxide to make graphite and water, and that would create enough graphite to make the Venus surface one kilometre thicker all around and cover 80% of it in water oceans. But at the end of it, you'd have an average temperature much closer to Earth, along with a ready supply of water and an oxygen-rich atmosphere. When people say terraforming is a big deal, they really mean it. Now with Mars, you have the opposite problem. It has a very thin atmosphere that offers no protection from deadly solar radiation. And also it means that the planet is very, very cold, about minus 63 degrees Celsius. Bombarding the planet with greenhouse gases like ammonia and carbon dioxide could lead to global warming, just like on Earth, as well as building up an atmosphere over time. Now these gases could in turn be used by basic plant life in exchange for oxygen, as happened in the early stages of life on Earth, and generate a breathable atmosphere. It would be the most expensive thing mankind has ever attempted. So much so that it's impossible to work out the costs. We'd be changing these planets forever. Places that have been untouched for billions of years. It's the spacefaring equivalent of building a brand new office block on top of a national park. And then of course, there's an alien question. It's important to remember that we still know comparatively little about these planets. Scientists believe that billions of years ago, Mars had an atmosphere and running water, much like Earth. And it's certainly possible that life existed then and might actually still exist now. Terraforming a planet would mean extinction for any life that already lived there. We'd be destroying their homes just to make it cosier for us. True, it's not like humans have never done that sort of thing before, but you'd think we'd know better by now. Brian Greene once said, Science is a process that takes us from confusion to understanding. And we couldn't agree more, as science has made almost everything simple for everyone. But there are a few things that have no explanation whatsoever. Welcome to You Curious, and here are 10 things that science has yet to explain. Ten, the placebo effect. You all know that when we get ill, we take medicine. When scientists are testing a medicine, they'll often give some of their patients what's called a placebo, which is a substitute for actual medicine. However, it has been found in the past that some patients have responded just as much to a placebo as they would have to actual medicine. Scientists theorize that this is an example of the power of the mind over the body. Because a person believes they're taking the medicine, they start to feel better. 9. Why magnets have two ends 
If you look at any bar magnet, you'll see that they have both a north and a south pole. If you cut that bar magnet into lots of tiny, 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 tiny magnets, the same thing would still happen. However, nobody's quite sure why. 8. Why is the sun so hot? Why is the sun's atmosphere so hot? The sun is huge, heavy, and has got a diameter of 1.39 million kilometers, which is 109 times that of Earth. The corona of the sun, its outer atmosphere, reaches a staggering 20 million degrees Celsius. Normally, similar stars to our sun would have a much cooler corona, but as yet, scientists have yet to explain why our sun is so special. 7. Gravity Sir Isaac Newton even told us about gravity hundreds of years ago when an apple fell on his head. There's no single explanation as to exactly how gravity works. Perhaps the simplest theory for gravity is that it's just a byproduct of all the other natural forces in the universe acting together. 6. Dreams Science still can't actually explain why human beings dream. Some people believe that dreaming is a way for our mind to filter and process information. Science has yet to explain what dreams mean, either. Some people believe that dreams contain hidden messages or meanings, but as yet there's no evidence to support this theory. 5. Where are all the mammoths? Millions of years ago, dinosaurs roamed the Earth. Even as recently as 10,000 years ago, woolly mammoths were around in the days of early man. But why don't we have any huge mammals anymore? There are several theories to explain their extinction. One is the rise of humanity, which resulted in them being hunted to extinction. Another is that climate change occurred at one point in the Earth's past, altering Earth's environment just enough so that survival became impossible for these large beasts. However, the most common line of thought says that they died out due to a number of complex factors acting together. 4. Compass Cows Have you ever watched a cow eat? They stand with their heads lowered to the ground, always chewing on their grass, and always facing either north or south. It's a weird one. 3. Yawning Yawning is really weird. Common thinking says that we yawn as a reflex because we're not taking in enough oxygen. But still, nobody can explain why seeing someone else you're talking about yawning makes us do it. 2. ASMR ASMR, or Autonomous Sensory Median Response, Studies have shown that people of all ages and backgrounds experience similar sensations through ASMR, and yet they've got no idea why. 1. Complex Carbs Human beings are incredibly complex organisms, right? You and me containing about 20,000 different genes. They help to make us the diverse and wonderfully complex species that we are. However, do you know what's more genetically complicated than you or me? A tomato. That's right, a tomato has 30,000 genes in its makeup. Why? Don't know, actually. Nobody knows, nor can they explain why the humble spud has even more genes, clocking in at 39,000 genes. You'd think that we, as sentient, walking, talking creatures who've built civilizations, would have a few more genes in there to make us work. But it turns out we might not be quite as complicated as we first thought. Until next time, keep watching You Curious. Discover more. No more.